All right, happy lockdown, everybody. It's Cash Night again, and happy Easter. Um, today, I'm going to uh, be ranking worst to best, in my opinion, anyway. Something I've been putting off since I started this. Um, not so much that it's a big collection, but it is kind of big. It was just so difficult. Uh, even when I got them all out, I was just looking and trying to put them in an, in an order. I was just like, really? This is so difficult. I, I know some of them, but as I got closer to what I consider my favorite albums, it just got really, really difficult. So, I'm gonna do the Iron Maiden collection. I don't know whether I've just said that. But, uh, here we go. Brace yourselves, because this, uh, people probably won't agree. Well, definitely they will not agree with this, but, you know, if you like it, you like it. Like the video, leave a comment. How would you do it different? What would you put as your number one? So on and so forth. You know what to do. Right, and I'm enjoying the, the comments. It's pretty good. Okay, so starting off, starting off with my least favorite album. And I think everyone can guess it's going to be one of two, uh, but I'm going to go with Virtual Eleven. Okay. Uh, when this came out, I was intrigued by the album art. Admittedly, um, I wasn't quite sure on uh, the spine because I thought it was going to build into something like uh, the other albums did. Well, when they were remastered, they did. This album, obviously it's the second album with Blaze Bailey, came out in 98. I think it's pretty weak. Uh, it, it suffers, for me, it suffers with a lot of repeating the choruses way too many times. If you take The Angel and the Gambler, for example, how many times you really need to go into the chorus? The same with The Clansman. The Clansman is like one of the, the most sing-along songs on the album. There are some... I suppose they're okay songs if they weren't so long. Future Real is, is a good song, you know, it's not too long and whatnot. Angel and Gambler could be good. The single version is okay because it just doesn't go on forever. Lightning Strikes twice. When Two Awards Collide, again, Educated Fool is a bit too mellow for me. Don't Look to the Eyes of a Stranger. I kind of like that one. And Come On, Star Amigos. I'm not a fan of that at all way too mellow um for some reason i always thought it was uh done by nico yeah the drummer nico mcbrain i don't know why but it was uh gears and bailey not a fan of that that song not really a fan of the album um the only thing i think sort of going for it is the artwork which i know a lot of people don't like but i kind of like to I, I like the swirling stuff that was going on and eddie just reaching out and don't I don't I kind of understand that the whole virtual reality thing going on it's virtual eleven the football pitch nah I just don't see the point in it but yeah that's uh, bottom of my list I, I very rarely go to this album very very rarely all right next up the X Factor the first Blaze Bailey album. And I uh, noticed a bit of a trend with the whole X's, you know, the Roman numerals. This was the 10th album, I believe, and obviously Virtual 11 being the 11th. Um, the reason why I rank this one higher than Virtual 11 is because I believe the songs sound a bit more maiden-y than on Virtual 11. You know, there's more of a maiden aspect. It is a very dark album, but uh, there, there was a lot of dark stuff going on at the time. You know, you got the sign of the cross stupidly long intro but when it kicks in i kind of like it lord of the flies i do like uh, man on the edge classic you know it's just classic it's the single well it's, it's not the only single but you know it is the the standout that this is going to be the single fortunes of war is okay look to the truth um the aftermath i like the solo in the aftermath or i did when i first said it I, I haven't listened to this album for a long time Judgment of Heaven is all right. Blood on the World Towns. Again, it's just, it's all this darkness and slow edge darkness. 2 a.m., The Unbe Unbeliever. Um, the album art was a bit weird for me. Um, again, I was intrigued by the artwork. 
um, I've got the the 12 inch picture disc of I believe it was Man on the Edge and it's got the let's have a look no it's not there the centerfold it's a close up of the Eddie being lobotomized I think it is in the center or it isn't here somewhere maybe it's not what the hell damn anyway it's Eddie being lobotomized on a big 12 inch record and it came with a massive poster and it's a massive poster of that same picture Hang on, hang on, hang on. This, yeah, there it is. That. Okay. I kind of liked it. You know, there was a. I don't know what to say. It was. It fits with the whole temperament of the album. The whole idea. You know, the artwork does fit in. But I gotta say, this came out in '95. Yeah, '95. Right. One thing I found weird was the lighting effects on, on the photos of the bands. Um, uh, when I think Pete had this album before me, and he pointed out Dave Murray, who kind of, in his words, said he looked like Casper. <laughs> right? But yeah, that's uh, Virtual Eleven. Just one of them albums. Not many people reach to. Um, like I say, it does sound more Maiden than Virtual Eleven, but it just doesn't do it. It just doesn't stand up. Unfortunately, I, I know there was a single uh, for Virus, which was on Best of the Beast. Again, it had a stupid long intro. When it kicked in, it was a bit better. Anyway, next up, people probably disagree, but uh, I don't disagree with myself. Not these days, anyway. Matter of Life and Death, 2006. Um, I was not a fan of this album. Different World was alright, um, being the single. Reincarnate, re the Reincarnation of Benjamin Breek was also a single. It was alright, again, it had the long intro. By this album, I kind of worked out where they were going. Long intro, kicks in, long ass solo, mellow, kicks in, mellow outro, that sort of thing. You know, you got different world, these colours don't run, brighter than a thousand suns, the pilgrim, the longest days, out of the shadows, reincarnation of Benjamin Brieg, for the greater good of God, lord of light, and the legacy. This, I wasn't even a fan of the artwork, right? I know there's a lot going on in there, but, I don't know, it's just, just not one for me. I don't know much to say about this, I, this would be my least favourite album, if the other two didn't exist, you know, it's just not, doesn't stand up for me at all. Next, we're going more classic era. Um, no, no prayer for the dying. Obviously, this is a remaster. The original had some sort of guy with a lamp on the cover. I like the, the artwork, but it is a lot more stripped down, you know, it, it's just even the live sets they. They just had artwork going on, you know, canvases of artwork, which they later revisited. Um, and going from the previous tour, it's like a real big downgrade. Yeah, so you got Tail Gunner, I like it. Holy Smoke, I find it nice, cheesy. I kind of like that one, you know. And I like the video for it because it's too cheesy. It's just one of them real cheesy videos. No prayer for the dying, I'm not really a fan of. Public Enemy number one. I was always confused because I always thought it was supposed to be Public Enemy. But Fakes Warning, The Assassin. Yeah, it's alright. Run Silent, Run Deep. It's okay again. Hooks in You, I like it. Um, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Obviously, a cover of Bruce's solo work on the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5 soundtrack thing. I think it was Part 5, yeah. And then Mother Russia. You know, um, with Bring Your Daughter, I do prefer the Maiden version to the Bruce version, but I think everyone does. It just seems more fuller, whereas Bruce, on his solo stuff, with Bring Your Daughter specifically, it's Dairy Milk. You know. But that's uh, 1990. No prayer for the dying. Next. <laughs> Might be surprised, but the Book of Souls. Right. 
the artwork for me it was okay until uh, I think that the normal CD version has the same artwork in the box, right? But uh, I got the book edition one because I thought it, the two discs. This was the only one available at the time, and I thought, oh, it's got two discs. It must be like the special edition, and whatnot. Obviously, the the normal CD was two discs because it's so damn long. Right? I would have thought that should have been the artwork. I like that picture. Um, I do prefer that being the artwork for, hang on, there was, I mean, even that, you know, it, just a, a basic album art, that would have been so much better as the artwork. Yeah, the cover art for me, it doesn't do much, um, the CDs, they're, they're interesting, I guess. But one thing with the CDs, it's very hard to tell which which disc is which. Is there a way of telling? No. Don't know which disc is which. You can never tell. I'm just, just trying to find it. I mean, obviously, this came out in 2015. Oh no, it does. It says it really, really small. If I take this disc out, I find it again. Really, really small. Somewhere. Around the edge, it does say disc one there. And judging on that, disc one has a black rim around it, and disc two has an orangey rim around it. That's the way they're telling. The reason why I, this is so t low on my list is because it's so long. Not to say that the long songs are terrible or anything. Again, it suffers with what Virtual Eleven suffers. How many times do you have to go on with the chorus, repeat the chorus, you have a long solo, then you repeat the chorus, and repeat the chorus, repeat the chorus, you should have faded out right then. But no, it repeats, 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 then there's a little bit of a lead to go out. Um, the songs are okay, if they weren't so long. You know, I like Speed of Light, I like the, the short songs, Death of Glory, you know. Uh, Man of Sorrows. I originally thought it was a cover of Bruce's Man of Sorrows, but uh, it's not. And it just, it doesn't hold up for me. Again, it slips into the long intro, kicks in, long solo, mellow, solo, chorus, long outro. And unfortunately, that's uh, down there. Uh, I'm sure there was something else I wanted to say about this album. I, I've got the, the live version of this. I did notice after 2000, they would release an album, then release a great set and a live album. I like the fact that they released a live album afterwards. I wasn't wasn't too much of a fan of album, great sets, live. Album, live, album, live. Yeah, that's, that's, that's alright for me. I, I kind of enjoy that. But, um, also, that was what I was thinking of, it seems like Bruce is straining a lot on this album. Unfortunately, yes, he is old, he's been doing it for more than 40 years, and his voice ain't cutting it no more, you know? Struggling with his voice, fair enough. But he's still going, and, you know, the whole band is still going fair place for that. But, it just seems like... Let's do longer songs and repeat the chorus. So we want a long song. We only need two verses, a chorus which we can repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And repeat and you, you get the picture. Um, so that's the Book of Souls. Next up, we've got 2003's Dance of Death. I was not a fan of this album. Though. It's too CGI, way too CGI. And um, I think that that one there is kind of creepy. Uh, the thing I remember about this album is I had a temp job at the time and I went to a, an EMI distribution centre and I saw this before it was released and we were shipping it, getting it ready to go into stores and whatever. I was like, ooh, Dance of Death. Seemed interesting. Uh, this was the second album after Bruce had returned. And so it was a bit more exciting. Uh, 
Wildest Dreams was a bit... Yeah, Rainmaker, I kind of like. No More Lies, I really like. Montsegur, I can't pronounce that. Yeah. Dance of Death, I like. You know, Again, it's long, but it's fitting. There is a bit of a repeat going on, but I liked it. It wasn't too much. Gates of Tomorrow, New Frontier. Passchendaele. Ah, Passchendaele reminds me. All right. At the time, the time of this, there was a... Uh, well, around the time this came out, me and Pete used to tab out songs. We, we'd, uh, we'd try and figure out how to play songs and write it out in tab. With, with Power Tab, you add the notes and whatever, so it would play along and you could learn to play a lot easier. It's a lot like, um, I can't remember the app that's going around now. There, there is an app which helps you learn to play along and whatnot. And uh, he was working on Passchendaele, I think it was. And I was like, right, if I can work out and tab out Passchendaele within a week, I'm really trying to remember, can't remember the time frame, you owe me steak. He managed to do it. And yeah, so I made this really bad steak. Not out of spite or anything, it was just like I couldn't cook. Uh, so this, this steak was tough and everything. <laughs> it was just, Terrible mint sauce uh, on boiled potatoes, which was all right. But yeah, that's uh, something that uh, I remembered as uh, after I did that that vlog type thing, and I was talking about you know the the good old days of Pete and what else. We started talking more. He watched it and he's like, "Oh, I remember that. Wow, forgot about that." So on and so forth. And we started pointing out things like, "Ah, I remembered about this." Remember about this, and we, you know the memories are coming back as one will remember something, and the other doesn't, vice versa, so on and so forth. And that's what what came came during the, this conversation. But I didn't actually mention that, so I'm going to save that till I do my maiden one. Next up, Rook Killers. Good album, very good album. Right, the only thing that this suffers from is overproduction. Um, second, their second album, 1981, second album with Paul Diano. This is the remastered version, so it's got Twilight Zone, um, opens with the Ides of March, Spaff Child. <laughs> if you've seen uh, my vlog thing, you'll understand what I'm all about. Murders in the Room, what great songs, another life's alright. Genghis Khan, nice, Innocent Exile, Killers, Tart Track, great song. Uh, Prodigal Son, uh, not too much of that. Purgatory is great. Twilight Zone, I really do love. And Drifter, it's all right, you know. Uh, obviously, classic artwork. It's on cups, t-shirts, everything. Surprising, really. This Eddie seems to be more popular than the Dickinson Eddies. It's, it's kind of strange. Yeah, and it's the most overproduced album, I think, anyway. Um, and that's where it suffers from. This would be higher up my list if it wasn't so overproduced, so polished, so to speak. Yeah. But killers. So next we've got peace of mind. People are being crazy right now. Like no, blasphemy. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, 1983. I believe this was. Second album with Dickinson. Fourth album released. Um, what lets this down for me is the Trooper. Oddly enough, I'm so sick of hearing the Trooper. You meet the Maiden fan and all they're going on about is the Trooper. It's not that much of a great song. It was, it was good back in the day, but man, it does my head in now. Um, you know, you're Where Eagles, there's a great song. Revelation's a great song. Flight of Icarus, nice and cheesy. Something I really did find weird about, um... Flight of Icarus is there's a line that says his eyes are ablaze, so blah, blah 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 blah, right? And in the video, at that point, it focuses on uh, Nico's eyes. Then so many years later, I don't know, two thousand, whatever, year two thousand, Blaze Bailey does his first solo album. It's called the Silicon Messiah, but on the front cover, it's mostly focused on his eyes, and I just I found that weird. Uh, you got Die With Your Boots on, great song, I love that song. Uh, 
and the trooper yeah uh still life that's all right quest for fire sun and steel entertain the land i kind of like to tame land it's a nice really good song um artwork's interesting and around this time i believe someone was trying to kill off the the eddie mascot there, there was a live gig and uh, bruce ripped off uh where he's had the lobotomy, he ripped that off, ripped his brains out and whatnot. Um, the the artist Derek Riggs. There was an interview in, on the Twelve Wasted Years video. And it's like, oh, they didn't tell me that they killed him off at a live show, and uh, it's a good thing they didn't because Eddie is a classic mascot. Right. Next up, we're going with the debut album. I made in 1980. This is great. Obviously, it's the first album. It's something I didn't mention about Killers. Killers um, features Adrian Smith for the first time. This had Dennis Stratton. Um, there is something missing, actually, thinking about with the Killers record and this first record. Um, there's a song that's missing because it's a cover. Right? They released a song called Women in Uniform. Uh, I'm not too sure whether it was before or after Killers, so it could have been after this one. Uh, it's a, a Skyhooks cover, and I really like that song. Again, it's got Paul Diano singing, and it's just a great song. Your Prowler, one opening riff, Sanctuary, which wasn't on the original release, and obviously the original release had more of a, a painted cover. This is more CGI. Uh, Remember Tomorrow, it, I used to like it, but now it's a bit too much. Running Free, great. Phantom the Opera, great. Transylvania, nice instrumental. Not a fan of Strange World. Charlotte the Harlot, brilliant song. And then the title track, the band name, the song, I Am Maiden. Great. Um, just brilliant album. It's raw. It just introduces everything. This is one of the ones that really kicked off the twin guitar things or made it more widely known as twin guitar um, as I read I read that in an interview or something somewhere I don't know I'm old I've read a lot of stuff surprising I don't read anymore but anyway yeah that that one is in there it's, it's just I think it's the rawness of it which I really like next everyone everyone's gonna hate me for this this is more blasphemous than peace of mind number of the beast Okay, 1982, year I was born. First to feature Bruce. And the thing for me is, I think a lot of it is overplayed, and my favourite song on the album is 22 Acacia Avenue. There's part two to Charlotte the Harlot. And I found out that there is a, an Acacia Avenue in the city that I live in. If anyone knows, it's Coventry, it's down London Road. It is Acacia Avenue. Right, uh, so it opens with Invaders. Children of the Damned is a great song. Um, not too much of a fan of Invaders, but uh, it's still a good song. The Prisoner. I recently got back into The Prisoner. Yeah, it's very very catchy. Obviously, 22 Acacia Avenue, Number of the Beast, Tart Track. Great song, just a bit too much overplayed. Run to the Hills, again, it's a great song, but overplayed. Gangland, not a fan of it. Uh, Total Eclipse was, uh, I believe that was missing off the original album. Um, but that's a great song. That should have been on the album instead of Gangland. And Hallowed Be Thy Name, great song. Not so much overplayed anymore, but there was a few years ago where it was just constantly played. But uh, yeah, that's somewhere in the collection. Sort of in the middle, you know, this is where it was starting to get difficult for me. Well, after Book of Souls, it got difficult for me. Uh, right. Next. Final Frontier. 2010. Okay. I love the artwork because I like sci-fi stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, you got Satellite 15, Final Frontier. I've mentioned in previous videos, I hate the Satellite 15 bit. It's too long and too crap for me. Once the song kicks in, it's great. I love the Final Frontier, the song. The Satellite 15 bit was just really not a fan of it. And that's what that gives it the the really long song effect. 
El Dorado is a good song. Mother of Mercy, great. Uh, Coming Home, The Alchemist, Isle of Avalon. You know what? That was really confusing. Or is it? I don't know. I can't read it. It's weird writing. It's weird writing. I should know this, but I can't even open it. Damn it. It's been a while since I listened to the Maiden stuff because a lot of it has been overplayed for me. Um, where is it? Let's just confirm. Mother Mercy, Coming Home. Yes, it is Isle of Avalon. But I've missed a song. The Alchemist. Did I mention that? I don't know. Alright. Yeah, I went to put it in on that. Oh, this is the, the tin edition. Uh, I think it adds a nice effect. So, a porthole going on. Uh, Starblind, Talisman, The Man Who Would Be King. When the wind. When the wild wind blows. And that's a bit of a. Uh, but yeah, so 2010 to Final Frontier. I'm a bit of a Star Trek fan as well, so that tied in with that, and I do really like that that artwork. Um, it's just a, a great album. Okay, so that's uh, I think that's all the newest of albums anyway. Okay, so that's there. And yes, I believe it beats Number of the Beast. It's just a lot more. It seems a lot more heavier and a lot more structured. Whereas Number of the Beast is a bit more raw, but it's just overplayed and everyone's like, yay, Trooper, Number of the Beast, and all that sort of stuff, you know. Ah, one day, one day they'll, they'll learn like, nah, I hate that song now. Next up, Somewhere in Time. A lot of people don't, don't really like this album. Stupid washing machine. Hate it. Um, right. The album, uh... What I enjoyed about this this artwork particularly is uh, I've got it on vinyl. There's a lot of hidden things in there. Um, anything off the top of my head? Yeah, right here you got an Iron Maiden poster. Eddie lives. Um, it was always fun to try and find Derek Rick's signature. Uh, damn, I can't see it anymore. But the Ah, just up here you got a case around you. And it was particularly on the back. Whoa. What the hell happened there? Teeth fell out. That's weird. I hate it when the teeth fall out of CDs. Oh, come on. I can't get the book out. Okay, so. Let's try it without the book. Okay. Somewhere that in that lot is Batman. Where the hell was Batman? I remember seeing him. Right, okay, yeah. Oh, this is weird. Okay, so you got Batman up here. You got Icarus up there somewhere. You got the, the pyramids representing Power Slave. Two minutes to midnight. Uh, the Ruskin Arms down here, which is where they used to play. Uh, Bruce holding a brain, symbolizing peace of mind. So much hidden stuff. You know, Ace's Hyde Bar. You got the TARDIS. Uh, Rainbow Bar and Grill, Phantom Opera House. You can't actually see it on the CD, but somewhere, somewhere in that back lot, there is a sign which says "Eat Gears" or "Eat Gears," whatever. I think it's supposed to have said "Meat Burgers," but uh, it's like "Eat Gears," which is kind of weird because this was '86. You know, Yannick Gears hadn't joined the band at that time. Um, you, know, you got caught somewhere in time. Great opening song, "Wasted Years." Great song. Sea of Madness is. I kind of like it. Heaven Can Wait was a bit overplayed back in the day. The Loneliness of the Long Distance Run Out. I found to. I'm not too sure. There, there is a weird aura about this album. The same. I, I don't know. Aura. Whatever. There's a, there's a weird sound, a weird tone. Um, but with the loneliness of long distance runner, it's kind of that same tonal thing as with X Factor. Stranger and Strange and it's a great song. Love the song. Um, Deja Vu is a great one. And Alexander the Great. I really like it. It may be a long song, but I really like Alexander the Great. It's it's just it tells us it tells the story. And it doesn't overdo it, you know. 
even the chorus isn't repeated and repeated and repeated. Um, so that is 986, Somewhere in Time. Good album. Ha. Next up, we're going Power Slave, 1984. Okay. This also features uh, a lot of hidden stuff in, in the cover art. It's a nice cover art. And I did notice something, um, particularly with this album. Very Egyptian themed cover. And the songs, with the exception of Aces High and Two Minutes of Midnight, they kind of, they don't sound Egyptian-y, but they kind of do. Um, with everything up to possibly No Prayer, you can tell what album it is it's off. Again, it's something to do with that, that tone. Um, it's a strange thing. Somewhere, you've got Mickey, I think it's Mickey Mouse or Goofy, but you really can't see it on here. Um, got, there is somewhere, they're like carvings in the stone, and there's one with a, a little man with a big nose hanging over, like, looking over a wall, and it says, what, no Guinness? Uh, but your ace is high. I really like that song. I like it better than Two Minutes to Midnight, but I can play the intro to Two Minutes to Midnight. So, uh, Lost for Words, Big R. Not too sure what a Big R is, but uh, I really like that instrumental. Flash of the Blade, great song. The Duelists, great song. Back in the Village, great song. Power Slave, bit overplayed, but still a great song. And then my favourite of this album, probably one of my most favourite Maiden songs, is The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Longest song they'd done at the time. Um, but I like it, even though it's got that middle bit, and even when it's done live, when, it's, when it was done live on uh, the Live After Death, you know, the, the, full, the, the live album after this, uh, was it Power Slave Tour or World Slavery Tour? Um, it's just amazing, uh, and that's something that that Maiden have kind of tried to keep up with over the years. Great live, great sounding live, um, but the shows, the shows have kind of gone downhill. I, under, I understand like production, but the production on this uh, with the live shows for this tour, wow, you know, with with the big uh, Pharaoh Eddie head opening up and all. So they did the same with uh, Somewhere in Time. There was a, a drum riser, and Eddie's head would pop out a big balloon, and his hands would pop out of the front of the stage. Great stuff. But yeah, that's uh, that's that one, <laughs> All right? Next up, wow, there's only three to go. I thought this would take ages. Next up, Brave New World, 2000. Okay, obviously Bruce came back. Um, there's something strange about this art artwork. I liked it. Um, one of the things, it does have a sentimental sort of th feeling about it. Uh, I remember the the hype. You know, I remember the build of Bruce's back. They've got a new album coming out. They've got three guitarists. Um, it was just, when, uh, when it was released... Uh, I went out on the release day, I think Pete did the same thing, got it. Uh, I'd heard The Wicker Man and I wasn't that blown away by The Wicker Man. I heard it on some rock radio station, you know, where you had to tune, you had to tune the radio station. What the hell's going on outside? Um, but I wasn't too blown away by it and at one point I thought Blaze was still back in the band. But I only heard it the once, when I heard it the second time, I was like, no, Blaze weren't. Blaze weren't on that song. Um, Ghost of the Navigator is a great song. Brave New World, not really a fan of the Dying Swans bit, but uh, Blood Brothers is great. The Mercenary, Dream of Mirrors, I really like Dream of Mirrors. Fallen Angels, good song. Nomad, a bit weird, uh, it sounds like it should have been on uh, Power Slave to me. Out of the Silent Planet was released as a single, uh, I liked it. And The Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Really, it seems like quite a short album, but it's a good album. You know, this was the return. Um, I'm not too sure what was going on with the balloons in the video. And the balloons are on the back, you know, it's the, the big, big old balloons. The video for Wicked Man I'm talking about, anyway. 
Um, it's good songs. There's no teeth in this. Great. Got to replace that. But uh, yeah, this this was a maiden of the 2000s. It's, looking back at it, it's, it's kind of strange. And I'm remembering the feelings and this is maiden. This is the new maiden. Um, yeah. So 2000s Brave New World. Even though I'm not a fan of the CGI stuff, I do like all that CGI thing there, and obviously even the title has something going on with it. It, it, it represents like everything's changed. Bruce's been away for seven years or whatever it was, and uh, everything had changed in the music industry. So that's my number three. Next up, you know what two albums are left anyway? Seventh Son. Again, I like the album out. Um, the song that I don't like on this album is Can I Play With Madness. I used to love it, but because it's overplayed that much. Uh, this was one of the first albums I heard. That's why it's uh, it's up there for me. It, so it's got that sentimentality. It's the first album, and I have this thing with a lot of the times the first album I hear by a band tends to be my favourite, doesn't matter how crap it is, no, I'm not saying this is crap, I really enjoy this album, I, you know, it's got a story going on and, and whatnot, Moonchild, it's what an intro, you know, to the album, um, apart from the Seven Deadly Sins bit, I just thought, eh, but I understand it was a kind of concept album, and then Infinite Dreams, not too long, but it's nice, Can't Play With Madness, just way overplayed, the thing I liked about the, the Can I Play With Madness video is where Eddie pulls out the womb in the video, just pulls out. Yeah, uh, the evil that men do. Great song, Seven Son of the Seven Son title track. So powerful, just just, just so much power going into it. Uh, really difficult song to sing. I tried. At least I didn't do it live. I did try and sing those. No. Way too difficult. And the Prophecy, this is a short album looking at it. Prophecy is a nice, catchy song, and I like it. The Clairvoyant, it's a classic song. Everyone seems to have forgotten about The Clairvoyant these days. Uh, but it's classic, it's a sing along. And then it ends with Only the Good Die Young. I'm not too sure what the story was going on with this, you know. But. Obviously things had changed, they, they, they started incorporating a bit of keyboard stuff going on, all for this. And uh, yeah, the thing that, one of the things that does stand out about this album is the live album that was released was recorded in Birmingham, which is so many miles that way. I could say that about any live album, it's so many miles that way, but uh, yeah, Birmingham's a close city. So. That's another thing I liked. Um, I like watching the live video for this tour. Loved it. Even the sooty bit. Didn't didn't understand it, but hey, you know, it's Nick on the brain for you. And my number one is Fear of the Dark. Not because of the title track. I kind of hate the title track these days. Yeah, yeah. 1992. That this one came out in '88. 992, Fear of the Dark. Not so much of a fan of the cover. I think it was a different artist. Um, but be, be quick, uh, be quick or be dead. Great, great way to kick into the album. Fast paced, the scream, and it's, it's just so fast going on. Even the video is just flash, 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 flash. You know. Um, from here to eternity, I still like it. I know it's cheesy. I know it's it's almost cock rock or, or whatever you want to call it, but I like it. I still like it. It, it is the fourth part in the Charlotte Harlot series. Yeah? Obviously, you got uh, Charlotte Harlot, Twenty Two Acacia Avenue. Those are the ones that stand out as Charlotte stories. Part three was Hooks in You of No Prayer After Dying. And part four, it mentions Charlotte uh, in From Here to Eternity. Also, the teeth are broken in this. Also, she's in the video. 
Um, Afraid to Shoot Strangers, kind of a forgotten classic. I do, I like it, I, particularly when it kicks in and there's a certain, there's a part of the solo where I think it's like a key change or something and it really, to me it gives me kind of goosebumps, that, that, that rattling is doing my head in. Um, Fear is the key, I'm not too much a fan of it, Childhood's End. It, it's good, it's got this, this rhythm going on, it keeps you going. Wasting Love. Uh, again, it falls into the the cock rock category for me. Anyway, um, the fugitive I like. Chains of Misery, I love it. Uh, Apparition, yeah, it's a bit more slowed down. It kind of reminds me of uh, you got another thing coming by a Priest. Whoa, I have just noticed a, a mistake. I'll have to check the, uh, the original album, see if it's got it. Um, okay. okay, I'm going to point this out, if you can see it. Where is it? The Apparition. Oh, I'm reading backwards. Right, just after it says The Apparition, where there, uh, it says Gears, slash Gears. That's... Wow. I've never noticed this. I've had this album for way over 20 years. Um, you know... Wow, that, that, that kind of puts everything into perspective. Uh, Brave New World, 20 years ago. Man, I remember it. Um, Judas Be My Guide. It does fall a little bit into the cheesy cock rocky, but I like it. I really like it. Weekend Warrior. It's a great song. And then the title track, Fear of the Dark. It was good. I, I enjoyed it um, for the first few years of having the album. Um, but it just became so overplayed and I just can't stand it anymore. But pause. People interrupt him. What can you do? Yeah, so uh, the title track I'm just not a fan of anymore. Like I said, I used to like it, but it's just so overplayed. And I'd rather not hear it ever again. Well, okay, I can still hear it every day, every so often. Maybe once a year should be all right. I like the Trooper, once every two years. But uh, that's my number one, Fear of the Dark, from 1992. Good album. It, and it was the first album I heard. That's one of the reasons why it is uh, number one. I think it was, yeah. It was the first album, followed by Seventh Son. Um, yeah. Great album. So that's it. That's my Maiden Collection. That nah, wasn't so much to, to worry about, thinking about it. Got through it pretty quick. And I'm kind of happy with the way I've laid it out. I know people ain't, ain't going to be, but uh, leave a comment. You know, Tell me how you would have done things different. Probably everyone's going to put in Number of the Beasts at number one, but... Listen to the other stuff. There is so much more in their catalogue. But if you like it, leave a like. Uh, comment, subscribe, it's all good, and uh, stay safe, catch you on the next video, whatever that may be.